out of the four subjects I did, biology was my least favourite for a reason. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. It's time for an honest review of A-level biology. Yeah, biology is a subject a lot of people take and I don't know why if you are thinking of choosing biology, why you're thinking of choosing biology, is it because you want to pursue medicine? Is it because you want to pursue zoology? Anything to do with the human body, any physiotherapy, um, even geography. If biology does come into geography, believe it or not, and geography into biology. So they do go hand in hand. But no matter what it is that you want to do, biology is a good subject to have. It shows you can think about things, it shows you you can, you have an interest in the human body and you want to learn more about how the body works, how other bodies work, like plants, I guess, um, and want to learn, you know, in depth a lot about this. But, but what a two years it's been on my journey of A-level biology. It's been a long one, um, a very long one. And so, let's get into my honest review. So, number one, the course content. There's a lot of biology. Like, this is my biology folder. This isn't even all the stuff. There's a lot of it. Like, a solid amount of biology. There are so many topics. <sighs> like, it's insane. There are so many topics. So much overlap in A, S and A2. So much overlap in topics. So you have to make sure you really know one topic before you can even move on to the next one. You go so much further in depth than you did GCSE. Just putting that out there now, if GCSE you thought went too deep, we just wait till A level biology. Because you go so in depth in all of the topics, it's insane. Like, the stuff I know now is kind of incredible from what I knew at GCSE. Um, yeah. And biology is very very precise. You want to know exactly what you're writing down for definitions every single time. You want to know exactly the right wording the biology markers want you to do so you can get the marks in your exam. Because there's no point in learning it if you're not going to be able to get marks for it. Which is disappointing because personally I think that if you learn the content and if you understand it and you find it interesting then that's really what should matter but not in an exam sadly. Um, which is one of the things I struggle with most. I learned the biology, I know the biology, but could I get the marks in the exam by writing exactly what they wanted me to say? Maybe not. So you do need to learn that. Um, and you need to know everything in a lot of detail. I have my biology notebook, which goes into a lot of detail about all the topics. Um, more detail than textbook goes into, um, more detail than the revision guides go into. I mean, it's full of graphs and diagrams and pictures and let's see if I can find a good one. Um, I mean, here, here's some that you do in A2 biology. Um, there's only one of my biology notebooks, I have three of them. But wow, you go really in depth and you need to learn how to learn biology. It's a skill that I don't really know if I ever fully got. So yeah, course content, a lot. Let's go into number two. What is my favourite topic in A-level biology? Now, this is going to come maybe as a surprise or maybe not if you know me. I loved respiration. I absolutely loved the chemistry in biology, um, learning about what molecules do in the body, um, how molecules interact with the body, what happens to molecules in the body. And respiration basically tells you what happens if you eat food and you take the energy out of the food no matter what the food is. Um, so if it's something that has carbohydrates, so bread, you're going to take the sugar out of the bread, um, you know, your body breaks it down and you absorb the sugar. And then that sugar gets broken down into all these different molecules and things are stripped off, carbon dioxide is stripped off and energy is created from stripping parts of this sugar down into oxygen. Um, or in the Krebs cycle, it gets stuck in the oxaloacetate, acetyl, um, that whole loop there. It's really interesting. I find it really interesting. Um, and I love memorising metabolic pathways. I have posters. I had board diagrams. Um, I have a poster. In fact, I have posters of everything in biology. Like, well, I have five on my wall currently, um, which I will show you. Um, but I love memorising the metabolic pathways. I find it really interesting. 
I mean, maybe that's because I'm more chemistry based than biology, really. But I found that really interesting. And it was the sort of thing you're like, wow, it kind of makes sense now why this is so complicated, what happens, why this happens. Um, and you do get that with the entire course of like, you kind of understand why things are the way they are after learning biology. I think it's great. I genuinely love that. Um, but a lot of people find that topic very difficult, which is understandable. It's not an easy topic <laughs> at all by any stretch of the imagination. It's not easy. Um, but let's go to my least favourite topic now. I'm really talking about A2 biology, but this is going to go back into AS as well. Ecology was my least favourite topic. Anything with ecology, anything with interactions between animals and plants. No. No, thank you. Um, populations is boring to me. It's boring. I do not care about ecosystems. Um, the AS stuff, water and nutrient transport in plants, I'm actually finding that more use or not useful, more interesting now than I did when I was doing it. Um, but that whole ecology section in the textbook, this is the A2 textbook, so it's your second year of biology. Um, this whole section here is boring to me. Like, I didn't get it. Now, there are some things in that section that I found oddly interesting, but not at the time. It's weird. Biology's kind of a thing that you may not like at the time and then love later, or you may love at the time and then not like later with topics. So, um, succession is one of the topics you do in communities, and it's kind of like how forests start from lichen on a rock and the lichen grows a bit and soil forms and then new species are able to grow in that bit of extra soil and more species are able to grow in that bit of extra soil and the soil nutrient content builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up until you get a forest. Um, I find that really interesting now because I don't have to learn it for an exam because, you know, if I'm up a mountain and I'm like, oh look, there's lichen on that rock and now that rock has moss on it and look, oh, that rock is actually kind of splitting and there's more, there's a grass for, on that rock now and I know, I now know how that happens but I, I'm, I'm really weird, aren't I? I'm really, really, really weird. But I kind of enjoyed that. I kind of enjoyed that now, but during whenever I was learning in school, no. Absolutely not. I hated it. Um, so yeah, biology's weird in that way, but my least favorite topic was definitely populations. <sighs> it was so boring. It was so boring to me. Um, but now let's go on to the last part, part four, the exam. If you are doing a biology exam, you will be writing a lot. Get, make sure your hands are ready. Make sure your arms are ready to be writing as much as you need to write in this biology exam. Because sometimes you're taught a lot more information than you need in the exam and you don't get marks for extra information unless it's your essay. So you want to really focus on what you need to write and write it down as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Your answers, if it's a four mark, you need your four points. Or you need your two points and described points. Um, you need your definitions off like that so that the examiners know exactly, oh yeah, yeah they're getting marks for this, this, this. Um, you need kind of template answers that you can change in different questions. You need to be able to apply information like that because you don't have time to think about how to apply the information. It needs to be coming off your head like this. It's hard that way. Biology is hard that way. The exam is definitely what I find the most hard. Like, the hardest about biology. Learning the content I kind of found fine. Some of some of the parts were a little bit boring and I kind of give up a bit but the exam was what I really found the hardest. I found pretty difficult. Um, and essays. So how it worked for me was you had a 16 mark essay in your first year or you had two 16 mark essays in your first year and you get two 18 mark essays in your second year, one per exam. And I kind of like the essays because they give you a chance to just spill out everything you learned from that topic. Um, often I would do practice essays where I just take a topic and I'd write out everything I knew in a kind of blurt fashion but in the same way you just kind of write down all the information in prose so you're just writing out sentences about what happens. I find that useful to then go get an essay in your essays. Your essay is going to be not worded describe this topic, it's going to be in some kind of context or um, 
describe the differences between respiration in animals and respiration in plants or describe the differences between respiration and photosynthesis or similarities and differences or compare and contrast respiration and photosynthesis and you would have to you know do that but it's pretty much write out respiration and write out photosynthesis and compare um, or you could be asked to talk about the role of million muscle in movement and you know you talk about muscle you talk about how muscles move you go through that topic so essays can be great if you get a good one, if you get a bad essay, I luckily didn't. I got an essay, I got an essay in respiration in my exam, um, which is nice. But yeah, sometimes if you get a bad essay, it's just not fun. I got an essay in phototropism in my January mock exam, or photoperiodism, which is boring. Um, it's kind of boring, but we, we worked through it, I waffled a bit, and I got 17 out of 18, I think, which wasn't too bad. But yeah, it is a bit like, why? Um, for some of those essays, and you're like, how can I write 18 marks worth of this? But a lot of it is split into a reciting section where you just da 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 and then another part is where you like, apply stuff to it. Um, but exams are heavily application-based, so you need to learn the content and you need to know how you can use it in different situations. You'll get situations about squids and squids have bigger neurons than us and you know bigger neurons less resistant to flow um so it's gonna that you know that your neuron your signals are gonna flow faster through that um really weird situations you can have things like you have a beach and you know we're gonna get some succession on a beach or if there's a volcanic eruption and secondary succession is gonna take place how is that gonna happen um, and it could be put into context. We had questions about bats being reservoirs for disease. We had a question that was scarily similar to coronavirus um, in one of the past papers. And you need to just you need to know the information so well that you can apply it like that to any given situation. And it does help to do a bit of research yourself to look a little bit outside the scope of the exam. Um, use the revision guides. I love these revision guides because. They give you a bit of a different viewpoint. They're not written by the same person as the textbook, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, they're not, which means you're getting two different people discussing the same things, which could give you an insight that someone doesn't give you. If you don't get it in the textbook, you may get it from the revision guide. But the revision guides are condensed down, so you need to know more than the revision guide. You need to know it in more in detail and be able to write it you know, in your own words. But um, for the exam, that'll help you a lot. And obviously, doing past paper questions is what I do to get myself exam ready. But yeah, biology, it's hard, but it's worth it. It is a good and interesting course to take. Um, but yeah, that's all the time I have for today. Let me know if you have any more questions about biology um, and I'll try and answer them in the comments down below. But don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, do all that great stuff. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.